Welcome, everybody, to the Rising Tide Leadership Podcast. I'm your host, Mo, and welcome to a very special series that we like to call Conversations with Candace, Insights into a Championship Season. And today, we embark on a journey to uncover the secrets behind building a championship team culture. And joining me is a true champion in every sense of the word, Coach Candace Motes, whose leadership propelled her team to victory in the 2023 NAIA Women's Volleyball National Championship. Coach Motes, welcome to the show. Hi, Mo. It's great to be here. I'm excited to talk to you. Wonderful. Well, let, let's dive in, Candice. So winning a national championship is no small feat. And I think all of your colleagues around the office and, and school have been kind of telling you that. You and I are colleagues. Uh, we've had great conversations. And so can you just share with us, share with my audience uh, and your audience, uh, let's just start with maybe the core values and mindset that were instrumental in your team's success this year? Yeah, sure. I, you know, I take core values and I evaluate them each year. And I think that you have to do that because your, your generations change. But um, one of the things that I think is most important anymore today is that athletes have to have an enjoyment. They have to have fun. They have to, they have to believe that this is something that's valuing their lives and that they want to be a part of it. So I spent a lot of time this year just helping them kind of get out of their heads where they could find the joy back in just playing the game. Because I think a lot of times you work so hard at your craft that it gets tiring, it gets frustrating, it can feel like a job. So believing yourself, believing in each other was really uh, a very specific value that we tried to work on right away. And then trust, Mo. Um, you got to trust yourself first. I don't think you can trust other people or trust coaches unless you trust yourself. And that is that you have to believe that you're supposed to be there, that you matter, that you can contribute, and that in doing that, you're adding value to what you're, to your team, to your teammates. And when you start to trust that, then you start to trust each other. Because community always builds something great. So if you all can get on the same page and believe that, hey, this is something that we're going to do together and fight together for, and it's going to be bigger than us, it can really propel you to a strong culture. So we really worked on trust, trust with coaches as well. Athletes have to believe that the coach beliefs in them and that they matter playing time is such a measurement and so we tried to break that down and try to find trust and value in other things besides just playing and minutes on the court yeah i'm taking some some great notes here and one of the things that i wrote down is something that i've heard from one of my favorite leaders, uh, John Maxwell, he wrote a book that I mentioned to you before called The 21 Irre Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. And in fact, in the very end of the book, he says that leaders can be judged by asking themselves the question each day, am I adding value to others? And you mentioned that adding value is important. You talk about trust uh, between athletes and coaches. Candace, tell me a little bit about... Um, how you do that? How do you add value to uh, the young women that uh, are on your team? Because I know how difficult it is to play, especially on a championship team. What are those things that you do to add value to these young people on the court and off the court? Um, you know, everybody, I think, wants to have purpose and wants to feel loved. And if those two things are in place, if if I'm feeling loved in and safe in the arena that I'm in or the community that I'm in, I'm going to be more vulnerable and I'm going to be able to really truly share where my weaknesses and my growth opportunities are. And I think that if you're moving forward in anything you do, Mo, you feel a lot more value in 
the time that you're spending. So I feel like that's one very important piece. And it also with that purpose comes or with that feeling safe and being loved is purpose. Like, what is my purpose for this team? If, if somebody's valuing me and that I'm giving good information, I'm giving good feedback, I'm encouraging people, I'm helping and feeling like I matter in this community that I'm, I'm with every day and for many, many hours, then I'm going to want to, I'm, I'm staying inspired and I want to keep giving and I want to keep doing what I'm doing because it's a joy to do it. And I think that off the court, um, we spent a lot of time, first of all, we went to the Dominican Republic and we really started to show that there's more to give to this program than just value on the court or performance on the court. I can give spiritually. I can give myself in a servant attitude. I can give myself in uh, ways that, you know, we can see where, where it's maybe we're not looking at ourselves as we're the top player on the court, but we're still mattering and we're still changing lives. And anybody that is changing someone's life I don't see how you can't feel good about that, you know, because when you're helping other people, and that's what we did in the Dominican was we were helping kids. We were helping them feel better about themselves. And you walk away feeling better about yourself when you get smiles on their face and they're wanting to come back the next day and they're like feeling special and they're feeling like, wow, something is good is happening to me right now. And that makes you feel like you contributed to just something good and to just start with that and then to carry that back to you know the sport world where pressure comes in where you know performance issues where identity all of those things wait a minute we want those things we want to pursue excellence we want performance to be high but we also want to know that as we're spending time together that we're also contributing in ways that are making us just better people. And I think that we all can contribute to that. There's no limitation, there are no measurement stick there. Everybody has the freedom to contribute and change people's lives. And that's what I feel like we were really trying to do. Absolutely, and <clears throat> Candace, uh, I remember coming uh, to the office during the summer and your team was already there, you, you all were doing uh, camps and prospect camps and uh, helping other, you know, young uh, people even, you know, in high school and below uh, be a part of what you're doing and part of that success culture, uh, that excellence. Um, I saw the hard work. I saw the resilience in your team this year. Uh, we, You and I talked about accountability a lot. Every time they came into to the office uh, during the fall in the middle of your season, it, no, no matter what time it came in, in the morning, you were already there. Your door was always open when I got there. <laughs> and and I, I, I'm in the Army. I, I pride myself on being the first one there with Candace. You were always there. And, and the more conversations that you and I had, it always came back to you telling me, Mo, it's about something bigger. Uh, this year than than uh, than me is what you would say. You say this is bigger than me, um, and and you didn't and and you would always, I say, well, I your ladies are doing great, and you say, well, Mo, th this is the one. I, th this is a tough one coming up, and we, and you were just so humble and so modest. And I know you don't do everything right. I know, um, I know we had a, a ton of conversations. I know you said um, you had shortfalls, your girls had shortfalls, um, but everybody. Uh, really kind of came together. And I remember, Candace, you said it was about fostering a growth mindset uh, where challenges were seen as opportunities for growth. And I really appreciated that. And that no matter what setbacks that you encountered, it was always a chance to learn and improve. So I think for all of our coaches out there, young, old, and in between, um, I hope you're you're getting some of this insight from Candace here. Now, Candace, um, l l let me ask you this. Let's talk about team culture specifically. What were the key strategies that you employed to foster strong relationships among uh, team members and coaches in this particular season? 
you know, Mo, from you being a California guy, uh, you probably have been at the ocean a lot. I wish I was at the ocean more than I have been <laughs> in my life because I'm, I'm a, I love the ocean as well. But when you're standing, um, at least this is my understanding, when you're standing in the water and the waves are coming at you, if if you dive into the wave, uh, there's more of a, a calmness under the water, even though it might be coming over the top of you, crash. And the image that I'm seeing here and kind of the way that we approach this season was there's a, that, you know, a lot of people say winning is, oh, what an easy season. How fun is that? You know, you keep winning all the time. It's not. It's not easy. There's more waves coming. There's more doubts coming. There's more pressure coming. And we kind of tried to talk about, you know, instead of being scared of the waves coming at us, let's dive in. So that went hand in hand with our athletes also like okay so there's somebody on our team that's just getting uh worn out because they're in their head and they're telling themselves they're not good enough and they're drawing sucking life out of the team um some john gordon calls it the energy vampire well Instead of like, you know, okay, we're just going to avoid that person and grow up, get it figured out, and let's move on, is that instead there was a wave coming at us. So let's dive into that person and let's try to help that person and get some grace. Yeah, it's hard to be an athlete. Yeah, it's hard to have the pressures of most of my players are in the medical field area, you know, nursing, pre-med exercise science, um, there's a lot of pressure academically as well. Let's dive into those pressure points and let's try to figure out how can we balance those things? How can we be honest? I'm feeling tired. I'm feeling worn out. You know, we talked a lot about, hey, let's have a, let's just have a check, checkpoint today. Where are we all at? How are we feeling? Um, what are we feeling about the week? And being able to just be honest with each other a little bit was helpful in that it got it out because you can carry all these things yourself, or you can realize you've got a team of people that also feel probably the same way you do, including the coaches, because coaches feel the pressure also. But we tried to kind of dive into the wave instead of letting it hit us all the time and in doing that we got we we grew stronger because i remember there were times man there were waves hitting us when we were playing in some situations where i was thinking well this is going to be the time where we're going to lose there's just no way we're going to pull through this one it's too much we just weren't playing well and we just found a way and i'm like girls how did you how did that happen and they were like, we just told each other, it doesn't matter. We're doing this for each other. This, this bond of friendship and this, this commonality that we're all in it and it's tough. We're going to dive under the wave and we're going to find the peace of just realizing that win or lose, we're doing our best and we're building a strong culture. And it, and it really, we didn't seek to be undefeated, Mo. That that just blew me away, and it still does. We weren't seeking to be undefeated. That wasn't really the go a goal. The goal was try to get as far as we could and maybe win a national championship, which is the goal every year. For 38 years, Mo, <laughs> I've been trying. That's been the goal. But <laughs> to, dive, yeah. to dive into that and to realize that it was so much more than winning. That wasn't even talked about. It was just about what are we learning from this and how are we growing stronger in this by not avoiding the things that were hard. Wow, that's great. You know, Candace, it's it's clear that building a championship team culture requires intentionality and dedication. So what 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 were some of those uh aspects of your season? that fostered 
that kind of intentionality, that kind of dedication between player to player, um, coaches to players. What are the things that you focused on to be intentional with your team to keep them focused? As you said, during the tough times, the times where you're thinking, man, this could be it. How, how do you be intentional? And in, in, how do you weave that into your culture? I, I think that you got to remind people if you, if you have a trusting culture, you got to remind people that you still care about them, that that the performance isn't the measuring stick, you know, like what, mm. who they are and how they're responding to the adversity is what we're after. So we're going to, we're going to praise you. We're going to care about you. You guys are doing great. I remember several times, even at the national championship run, there were many times I just reminded them, guys, you guys, are prepared and that's another thing i think if if you if your team feels prepared if your team feels competent in the skill set that they've been taught all you got to do is remind them that they can do this and i think i remember times when as an athlete myself there were times that man i was working so hard and it felt like things weren't always going so well and the anxiety and the pressure was building. And the reality for me was that when my coach or my mom or whoever would come and say to me, you know what, Candace, you you can do this. Just just relax. You're you're bigger than the identity of how it's going to turn out. So lean into your preparedness. Lean into the fact that you're loved. Lean into the fact that you love what you're doing. And just go have fun. Have fun. Do your best. And that's going to be enough. Because you're not measured by the end result. You're measured by the journey. And so any time that the girls were pressured you know it wasn't the response of coming back and just going what the heck are we doing you know good great let's go and there were times you know where we had to be a little more abrupt like hey like you are better than this you guys are better than this let's go um but it was more corporately telling them those things than to just really attack one person it when you build a strong culture, if you start to attack one person, everybody feels attacked. And it's crazy, but this group of girls were just so connected that it was more speaking to the whole group of let's do this. And then to just try to instill leaders within them as well. Like they're on the court, you know, they're the ones talking to each other. I remember um, we were tied in the championship match. Mo at I think it was eight or so, and then we got a few more points. And I remember watching one of our girls turn to the other group and just said, "We have bought this. We have worked so hard. We have given everything we got. Let's enjoy the rest of the way. Let's enjoy the rest of the way." And I knew Mo, we were probably going to win at that point because in the pressure of so close and putting all that anxiety and having to be perfect in that moment was all gone. There was a piece of let's enjoy doing this together, something that we have worked on the whole season and we feel like it's at our opportunity to take. And that was really cool. That was a cool moment for me to watch without me having to say anything they just kind of instilled it in themselves and found the joy and peace to just finish it. Well, and that was in the final game, is what you were saying. That, that's when that, that, yeah. that moment happened. Yeah. Wow. This set, uh, very, that, very intense moment. For, for, <laughs> wow. It, it, must be, it must be satisfying for you as a coach to see your team take the leadership in that moment and almost look to you and kind of say, hey, we're, 
we're, we're figuring this out and to watch that in real time it must be um gosh one one of the great moments of coaching that I, I would assume for you it, would that be a, a correct assessment oh yeah anytime that you have your players driving the ship it it's you know that you have arrived because I always remember someone telling me one time that if your program and I think you say this to me too, Mo. To be honest, when you can when things are running without you in a really good way in a smooth way, then you know that you've instilled enough leadership in it that they're just gonna they're gonna move you forward. And I feel like, you know, that's what I would want to do. If I walked away from this program, that it would run itself and that there would be joy and a drivenness and just a desire to be the best that they could be. Not for me, not for the winning, but for themselves to know that they have something that God gave them and they're using it for his glory. And that's what we always say, for his glory. And that's what we're trying to do. For his glory, we have joy and peace to be excellent in what God has given us. Well, wow, that's great. Um, and for our audience today, we've been talking about building a championship team culture. Candice, before we end this um, this episode today, do you have any final thoughts on what it means to build a championship team culture? I think that, you know, there's no secrets that you follow a checklist and say, this is what you got to do, then this is what you got to do. I think that you have to believe in yourself. You have to believe in your players. And you have to believe to the very last person. The less skilled person on the team has to be believed in as much as the, the highest level player on your team so that everybody feels valued. Everybody feels like they matter, that they're loved, they can contribute. No matter what they're doing, they can contribute. And then you got to remember, it's, it's a, a game. <laughs> it's a game and that we should be playing it for the love of it and not for any other reason, you know, but that we just are building, building memories and building moments, but we're growing is eventually and corporately as a group of people we're growing together and that's what matters is that we are we have changed our lives i always say this when i talk to recruits i always say you know indiana western university is an amazing place to come and study to do extracurricular activities to build relationships to grow in the lord Best place I know, but because you play volleyball, it's over the top. And when I say that, I'm, I mean the culture, the opportunity, relationships, the hard times, the best times, those things are going to put you to a place where you're going to look back and go, I will never forget my experience at Indiana Lawson University. That's my goal, Mo, and I don't do it perfect, but it is something that I strive to do the best way I can do the Holy Spirit's strength and and grace and try to love these girls the best of my time. Wow, well, um, wise words indeed, uh, Coach, and uh, thank you for sharing your insights uh, and expertise with us today. Um, and to our listeners, thank you for uh, tuning in to this episode of the Rising Tide Leadership Podcast. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share with all your friends. This has been Conversations with Candice, Insights into a Championship Season. Join us next time as we continue our exploration of leadership excellence. We'll see you then.